And there are Christians out there, like I mentioned earlier, that are contemplating self-deletion because they think that what they're going through is just them, for example, right? But in reality, it is a demon whispering in their ear, not physically whispering, but whispering in their ear in a form of influence. That is a real thing. That is a legit thing. Whispers from spirits are a legitimate thing. Spiritual warfare, I want to start off, is very real. Spiritual warfare is, think about it like this, spiritual warfare is the factory. And the physical is a product that comes out of the factory. Does that make sense? How was the world created in Gen from Genesis chapter 1? The world was created by a spiritual being, which is God. The supreme, the most high God, the creator of the universe, right? I'm not, I'm not calling God a factory, but I'm talking about the spiritual realm, right? I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. The spiritual realm is a factory and the physical world is the product of the factory. In the same way, spiritual warfare happens in the spirit and then it manifests in the natural. So if you go with me to Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. These are just a few examples. I'm going to give you the... The verses right so just in case you're doubting me that spiritual warfare is something that a christian ghost goes through i'm going to read to you a few verses there's many 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 innumerable examples in the word of god where a believer went through spiritual warfare but i'm just going to give you a few examples daniel chapter 10 verse 12 then he said this is the angel talking to daniel in a vision which was an actual angel in the vision speaking to daniel remember angelic visitations can happen in a dream and they are real angels that are in your dream uh, they are there are real angels that can also visit you uh, through visions just because you don't see them physically in the physical realm doesn't mean they can't communicate with you in other forms which is visions dreams uh, just to name a few so Daniel 10 verse 12 says here then he said the angel Gabriel I believe don't be afraid Daniel since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. I have come in answer to your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. So there is a principality over Persia that was giving warfare to Gabriel. Not a physical prince, a spiritual prince. And what is a prince? A ruler. Someone that has authority, right? Everything was made for God. But in the fallen state, even the angels rebelled against God. So God did not take away, notice this, God did not take away the principality's authority, right? But um, they, they don't serve God anymore. They, they serve Satan now, right? The principality, the evil princes of the air. So verse 13, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now, I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. So, in this context, Gabriel's uh, talking to Daniel about a, a vision, a prophetic vision of the future, right? Um, I'm not going to talk about the prophetic too much. I'm, ta I'm here to talk about spiritual warfare and the legitimacy of deliverance. So, I'm just going to give you a little bit of, of uh, verses of, of spiritual warfare, right? I, I want to dive more into deliverance and and um, towards the spiritual war in that aspect so you go again to verse 20 i'm not taking it out of context it's still in the same passage gabriel replied to daniel do you know why i have i have come soon i must return to fight against the spirit prince of the kingdom of persia and after that the spirit prince of the kingdom of greece will come so not only persia has a principality but greece also has its own principality its own uh evil ruler and that's just one example right in, in the old testament so if you go to the new testament in case you didn't know, right, if you're new to the channel or if you never heard of, of Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God, is God in the flesh. Right? I'm talking to the ones that have not met Jesus, right? What is deliverance? First of all, deliverance is the casting out of demons. Deliverance is the establishment of the kingdom of God. Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, But if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man? And plunder his goods only someone even stronger someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house so right here Jesus is establishing the reality that he is superior to every demonic entity 
right? Jesus is stronger than every demonic entity. Is saying that his power is superior, right? So deliverance is a legit thing, even among Christians, especially among Christians, right? We go to Ephesians 6.12, which is the most common verse uh, that people make a reference to regarding spiritual warfare. It says we battle not against flesh and blood, which is um, human against human, right? That's not the real war. The real question here is who is influencing the collision of those two mortals, of those two human beings. It's something spiritual. Something spiritual is pinning this human against that human. That's just one example, right? Um, and it's not just that, right? Spiritual warfare can manifest as in made known. Spiritual warfare can happen internally inside a believer, right? In other words, in the mind of the believer. Um, so if you're doubting that people can go through spiritual warfare as a Christian, Try to remember at least one time when you went through something that was uh, not external, right? You dealt with something that was not external. It was internal. So maybe as a Christian, you went through depression. Maybe as a Christian, you went through anxiety. Maybe you went through something that was internal, that, that was mental. And you, you thought it was something to do with your brain. Not always is it like that. Though there can be factors that are mental that cause you to go through such things. But the reality is that we're fighting a spiritual war. Their deliverance is legitimate. People go through depression episodes. Sometimes depression is so strong that it can lead pe even Christians um, to contemplate deletion, self-deletion. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Or anxious episodes. There are Christians out there that go through strong anxiety. There are Christians out there that go through a lot of spiritual warfare that is not external. Spiritual warfare can be external. For example, people can get into accidents or people can uh, get sick. There are spirits of infirmity. People can go, um, they can go insane, right? So if Legion, people thought Legion was a nut. People thought Legion was insane. People thought Legion had a mental problem, right? But the reality is that he had demons inside of him. So there are Christians that say that Christians can have demons, right? Which... And there are Christians that say that Christians cannot have demons, right? Where do I stand on that? I don't know for sure. If it's internal or if it's just demonic deception, um, there are various uh, trains of thought in regards to that. Um, my stance is that I don't know for sure, right? The Word of God does not specify that they can. But what I can tell you is that in the Gospels, Jesus would cast demons out of people, not off of them. Um, and people argue that the people that were getting exorcism in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, sorry, um, they weren't Christians. Biblically speaking, the people that got deliverance or exorcisms by Jesus in the New Testament, they all repented when they got delivered from an evil spirit, right? According to the context of the Word of God, right? Um, Jesus would often tell somebody, you know, go and sin no more or something worse might happen to you. Well, I think he told that to the woman who caught in adultery. He scratched that, right? But he would, he, Jesus would tell people, uh, you know, this. once you get deliverance, in other words, once a spirit leaves somebody, right? And when he would cast the demons out of people, he would tell the, 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 the crowds, he would say, an evil spirit goes through dry places seeking rest, but finds none. So if the, the evil spirit that was just casted out wanders around and you have not received the holy spirit it, meaning the house your house is empty if, if you're not filled with the holy spirit after deliverance your house is still empty the demon was casted out and you were cleaned up but if the holy spirit does not dwell in you then your house is still clean meaning there is no inhabitant so the unclean spirit that was casted out of you seeks rest but finds none and then goes back to you and sees that your house is empty then he's gonna not only take over the house all over again, not only invade the house all over again, but it's going to bring in seven other spirits even more wicked than itself. So with that being said, there are hierarchies of ranks of demonic entities. So there might be demons that don't have that much power, and there might be other demons that are more wicked than itself, like Jesus said, meaning they're more twisted, they're more evil. Um, and uh, there, there are levels and rankings in regards to this. And Jesus said, um, if you can't cast a certain demon out, he was telling his unbelieving disciples, right? People, uh, the disciples that had doubt, right? When they were doing deliverance, the disciples didn't cast out every demon they encountered. 
Because when they encounter difficulty, when they encounter a difficult demon, they will go to Jesus and Jesus rebuke them and saying, you a little faith. So faith is a factor to prayer and fasting because again, there are levels and hierarchies of demonic entities. Deliverance is not a game. I know deliverance has been very popular in the recent years, right? Um, but deliverance is not a game, right? Be ready because there might be a form of backlash. There can be, right? Speaking from, from what I've heard, right? People tell me their stories. Again, someone would also argue and push back on that and say, well, Jesus cast the demons out in the crowds. I'm not referring to that. I'm talking about to the deliverance minister, right? The ones that The one that performs deliverance, right? There might be backlash from demonic entities. And in the way that that might manifest, meaning the way that it might happen, it might be external or it can be internal. Again, you know how we spoke earlier about how angels can visit you in dreams and speak to you in dreams and visions? That's biblical, right? Um, demons can also do that. Or God can also let you know, hey, there's a demon in this area. You got to, you know, clean out this area, right, in your life, right? If you're still dwelling in sin, you have to repent. One of the best defenses against demonic entities is living a holy lifestyle. And even then, I've heard of people that live consecrated and they still deal with intense spiritual warfare. The Christian is going to battle it out throughout their lifetime, whether they like it or not. Spiritual warfare is a reality. Deliverance is a reality. The casting out of demons is a reality. And there are Christians out there, like I mentioned earlier, that are um, contemplating self-deletion because um, they think that those that what they're going through is just them, for example, right? But in reality, it is a demon whispering in their ear. Not physically whispering, but whispering in their ear in a form of influence. That is a real thing. That is a legit thing. Whispers from spirits are a legitimate thing in the in the spiritual warfare realm, right? And how does that manifest in the form of influence? A Christian might be influenced to, to be discouraged. Sometimes the devil will discourage you. That's a form of spiritual warfare. Discouragement. Sometimes it's satanic, right? There is satanic um, whispers. There is satanic influence that also can try to influence the Christian, right? The Christian has to go into prayer, into fasting, into a, a time of, of just seek of seeking the Lord, seeking the face of God, and just being intentional about seeking God and, and spending time with Him. The solution is, is there. And sometimes I've heard of Christians that even do that and they still battle with intense warfare. Well, find a, a band of brothers that you trust and, and get in prayer together. Uh, fast together. Do it together. That's what the church is there for. The church is there for the benefit of one another. We're supposed to build each other up. Uh, we're supposed to encourage each other in the Lord. We're supposed to, um, right, if, if somebody needs deliverance, do deliverance on each other, right? The church is a gift to the people of God, to the believers. It is, it is meant for the benefit of each other. It is not selfish. Love is patient. Love is not selfish. It is not envy. It, did not, it does not seek its own. So if you're dealing with some sort of mental health issue, right? You see in the doctors, they prescribed you medicine, but you don't feel like nothing's working. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. He cast the demon out of you if it's what you're dealing. Get offended. It doesn't matter. I don't, I'm not trying to offend you, but the truth is the truth. Sometimes it's not always mental. Sometimes it's not always um, a few loose wires in your head. Sometimes it's a demon that is tormenting you. And the demon is tormenting you because it probably has a legal right. Have you repented? Have you turned to Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Right? There can be open doors. There can be satanic portals. They're a legit thing. In the book of Job, it says that the winds come from chambers. Right? Um, so there are there are portals. Spiritual portals. Just think about that. That's, that's, that's crazy how that is. Right? How does wind that we cannot see, but it's there, come from something spiritual? The same thing, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1. But look, when you get deliverance, repent and give your life to Jesus. It says in the book of Jude, verse 5, that Jesus rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt. Meaning, if you, if you, come, if you convert, or meaning, right, Jesus will rescue you. He's calling you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Jesus will rescue you, and He will... But you have to remain faithful because it says in Jude verse 5 
And then later on, he destroyed those that did not remain faithful. And every time he would uh, encounter somebody, he would say, repent. And there are instances when he would say, repent, so that nothing worse happens to you. Meaning, the spiritual laws and the spiritual consequences are legitimate. We should take the spiritual realm more seriously than the physical realm. The physical realm is the finished product, and the spiritual realm is the factory. And let me emphasize that again, because we cannot be ignorant of the spiritual war. There are people out there, and especially Christians, maybe even lukewarm Christians that go through heavy spiritual warfare. Maybe if they took spiritual warfare around them seriously, maybe that Christian that you're praying for might repent genuinely and come to the Lord like you've been praying. Maybe when you take spiritual warfare seriously, there might be salvation in your family. Maybe when you take spiritual warfare seriously, there might be a change in your city. There might be change in your town. There might be change in your church. There might be change around you in your own life. Take it seriously. Spiritual warfare is a real thing. We have to remain consecrated. That is one of the def one of the best, if not the best, defense against the demonic. Put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, body armor of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the shoes of peace, and the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Yes, the scriptures. The sword of the spirit is the scriptures, but it is the word of God. When the Holy Spirit empowers the scriptures. It is the word of God. The Pharisees knew scriptures, but they did not know who God was and who is Jesus. Jesus is the word. They did not know Jesus. Therefore, they did not know the word. They knew the scriptures and the word of God is not always the same thing. You use the word of God as the sword. And don't underestimate spiritual warfare. You don't say, oh, the devil doesn't fight like that. The devil doesn't care. The devil doesn't have any rules to fight against. The devil will punch you everywhere. The devil doesn't follow a set of rules. There's no rules in this wrestling match. The wrestling match that the, that the devil gives you is gnarly. In the Bible times when Paul wrote Ephesians 6, wrestling was gnarly. It was in WWE. Wrestling in the Bible times meant breaking limbs, breaking fingers, um, and gnarly stuff, man. Um, and there was no tap out. So the devil's out to get the Christian, right? It is a real thing. The spiritual warfare is legitimate. It can manifest in many different ways. People have gotten into accidents. People have gotten sick. People have gotten um, have gone through very terrible stuff, and it's not always the physical realm. Right? I don't think there's this, biblically speaking, there's no coincidences. It happens because of something in the spiritual realm. Job's tragedies did not happen because God wanted it to happen. Job's tragedies were not coincidences. Job's tragedies were a result of Satan affecting Job. Jesus said, I've not I came to give life in abundance. The wolf, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said, I've come to give life in abundance. Check up on your brothers, check up on your sisters in the church. A lot of people might go through a lot of things they don't talk about. A lot of it is spiritual warfare. It's not natural. Don't give. When you refuse to talk about spiritual warfare out of fear that people might get scared, right there, you are not partnering with God. God wants you to be aware of the spiritual warfare. The Bible says, be not ignorant of the devil's schemes. Be not ignorant of the devil's devices, meaning there are satanic devices that are spiritual devices. As real as a fish is in the realm of the underwater. I don't like the way I put it, but I, I, I hope it makes sense to you. Demons are as real as a fish and the spiritual realm is as real as the ocean. It's a real thing. We are as a Christian we are supposed to cast demons out of people. If people are dealing with uh, demonic strongholds or, or uh, satanic oppression, it's legit. Demonic oppression, satanic oppression is legitimate. Do not underestimate the power of the enemy. We have power. The Holy Spirit gives us power. The enemy um, does not have authority over us, does not have power over us. But let's not undermine the satanic devices that the devil sends towards the believer.
towards the Christian. And when you do deliverance, make sure to shut the doors. Do not leave any doors open. Sometimes doors can be media that we listen to. Notice how you'll pay attention to entertainment that is very ungodly. And there's spiritual warfare happening around you. Don't be naive and say, it's not that, it's not that. Try it out. Get rid of it and see how everything just just goes away or calms down. The spiritual laws are legitimate. The devil can the devil fights on legal right. Where you open the door, he is very fast to pu- try to push the door down. Give the devil an inch and he will take a foot. Ministers can go through very intense warfare. The sheep that goes the sheep that go to church but don't minister go through intense warfare. Everybody does. If you're a human being on this planet, you are not exempt from spiritual warfare. Although God does fight for you, it is biblical that God fights for his nation. But you have to discern whether God is the one that's going to take care of it, which he always does. In fact, it, Jesus said, by the finger of God, I cast out demons. That's what Jesus said. It is by the finger of God that I cast out demons. Don't undermine it. Don't treat it as something that's, you know, a, a small thing. Spiritual warfare is a real deal, and somebody might be going through very heavy spiritual warfare, whether internal or external. But like always, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit leads you to pray for somebody, then be make sure to pray for that person. Maybe that person is contemplating self-deletion. You don't know. That is a principality at work right there. That's not a regular level demon. That's that's a principality at work. It's a higher, again, higher higher uh, levels of warfare. I'm gonna leave you all with this. Colossians verse, Colossians chapter one verse sixteen. For through him, Jesus, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. So right there, it is establishing that there are heavenly realms. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. There you have it. We will not see the spiritual realm. We can't see the spiritual realm, such as thrones, kingdoms, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through Him and for Him. Originally, God made those things for those things to worship God. But as we know, a third of the angels rebelled. A third of the angels uh, rebelled against God and God cast them down. Notice this. God did not take away the authority that he initially gave those uh, angelic rulers. Because principalities, that's what they are. They're um, satanic angelic rulers. right? A high level demon. Sure, call it that. High level demons. Um, fallen angels. right? Kingdoms, rulers, thrones, uh, realms of dominions right authorities in the unseen world right so all that stuff and don't undermine the existence of demons if you're not a believer right Um, the solution is christ if you're going through something whether it be external or internal that you cannot find the solution to give jesus a try ask jesus to show himself to you ask jesus to to make himself known to you and i promise you're gonna fall in love with him um jesus is a hero okay He's a hero. He's the solution. Anything. He made it. He made you. He made your emotions. He made your mind. He made your thoughts. He made your feelings. He made things we cannot see. See? So your fight might be spiritual. Do not lose hope. Do not. Not all hope is lost. Even though you might be at the bottom of the brink. I guarantee you. Jesus is the solution. For anything. And everything. Can you see your own thoughts? No, you can't see your own thoughts. Can you see your own emotions? You can't see your emotions. Can you see the oxygen? Can you see the wind? You can't see the wind. You can't see what the wind does. The wind blows here and there. You can you can't see emotions, but you're no but you cannot see emotions, but you know that emotions are there. How do you feel love? I can't prove love to you in a way that I can say, look, I'm holding love in my hand. No. But I can show you love by the fruit of it, by the fruit of the emotion. Likewise, don't discredit the existence of God. Even though you can't see God, 
You can't see your own mind either. You have a brain, but you have a mind. So don't discredit the existence of God. Give Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He paid for your sins, if you don't know. He paid for all your sins, past, present, and future. But we have to remain loyal to Him. We have to be born again of water and of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you a literal regeneration of your heart, of your mind. He washes you completely. Maybe what you're going through is because you haven't been born again and, and the devil's just taking advantage of that. Give Jesus a try. I exhort you. I encourage you. I urge you to give Jesus a try and see how everything changes. But we have to remain faithful to Jesus and, and stay away from sin. He would often tell people in the Bible, Okay, I've redeemed you. I've healed you. There's many times where Jesus casted out demons where, where people thought they were natural things, that they were natural causes. But it was a spirit, an evil spirit, a demon at work. And when he would do the deliverance, the exorcism, right, he would tell them, repent. Meaning, turn from your sinful nature. And give me your life. Be born again. Let me wash you. Let me give you the Holy Spirit. When Jesus gives you the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you, you will love him in a way that you've never loved anyone or anything ever in your life. You don't even know what love is until you meet God. Until you fall in love with God. It's legitimate. It is a legitimate love. You feel euphoric. Like you feel euphoric when you love somebody. Maybe not in an arrow's way romantically. But there's a love for God which is pure. It is not romantic in nature. But it is. It is. You, you still feel euphoric. Euphoria is, is a form of extreme happiness. Man, you don't know what I'm talking about unless you experience it yourself. Give Jesus Christ, the Son of God, a try. Ask Him to show up in your life. And I guarantee you He will. And you will see what a real hero is when you meet Him. He can deliver you. If everything else has failed you, He can't fail you. Give Jesus Christ a try. If you accept to be born again, if this video leads you to repent from your sin and be born again of spirit and of water just say I accept I accept to be born again ask the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit regenerate my heart regenerate my mind I'm yours make your home inside of me Holy Spirit I repent from my sin and I'm choosing to be born again I'm choosing to give you my life Jesus It's not always going to be sunshine and roses. Biblically speaking, it is a form of death. But you're, you, but it's not a harmful form of death. You're dying to the sinful nature. You're not dying to the good, to the holy things of God. You're dying to the sinful nature. Meaning your own sinful self, the, the, the old self, the dirty nature, the sinful nature. You're putting that aside. Because more than likely, that was the cause of your... Uh, torment, demonic torment. That was the cause of your satanic um, deception. That was open door to the demon. More than likely, like 90%. Because again, the Christian still battles with intense warfare. But the difference is that the Christian has a hero to go to, and that hero is Jesus Christ. The unbeliever doesn't have a hero to go to if they don't turn to God for help. There is no other hero. They can turn to medicine, but it's a temporary uh, solution. The solution that will never fail is Jesus Christ. So the Christian has the advantage, not the person, but the strength of who they're putting their trust in, which is God himself, the creator who made you. And God wants you to seek after him. If you give Jesus Christ your life, say this prayer. But say it with a sincerity. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent for my sin. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Make your home inside of me. Cleanse me. Regenerate me. Renew me. Rescue me and deliver me from my oppression, Lord Jesus. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for your helping hand. Remember, Jesus is stronger than every demonic entity. He is God Himself. He is God Himself that you can see, Jesus. Right? Well, the one that was 
a human, right? Nonetheless, God himself and the Son of God. Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father. God becomes your Father after you repent and turn to Jesus. You receive the spirit of adoption, meaning you don't belong to the world anymore. You don't belong to the devil, biblically speaking, because there was only two fathers, the devil or God. And people in the world do not know this, but their father is the devil. But after you get adopted into the kingdom of God, the devil is no longer your father. God is your father through Christ. From one, we have to remain faithful. Faithful to God. The Holy Spirit will help you do that. Don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit will help you. But we have to submit and be obedient to when he tells us to do something. To leave an, a sin or to throw away stuff, right? Uh, um, cigarettes, for example, right? We have to be obedient. We have to remain faithful, right? Um, say this, Father God, write my name in the book of life. Holy Spirit, deliver me, Lord Jesus. Deliver me, Lord. Rescue me from the hand of my oppressors. In Jesus' name, amen. So do me a favor. Somebody around you is probably going through something like this. So go ahead and send them this video. Let them know that Jesus is their Savior. And that Jesus wants to heal them. And that Jesus is the only solution. And the ultimate solution. Also, I made a podcast where I actually bring on guests and we discuss topics that are not really discussed. The link to the podcast, the last hour podcast, is right here. Alright guys, so I hope this video blessed you. Again, like, comment, subscribe. That way we can be promoted in the algorithm. Because uh, their algorithm does look at that and that's how videos are made um, known. Alright guys, hope this video blessed you. Until next time.